Alrighty, welcome back everyone, I am Blaze here. So I'm wanting to make a guide on getting started with EverQuest on both Project 1999 as well as live servers. So this is going to be the first video in that series. I strongly recommend if you're considering playing EverQuest, this is probably the first video you want to come to. Also going to give my link to classes. I'm going to give a link in the description to what class you might want to pick. I have a video made on that. But let's get started. Um, the, so EverQuest really has a dramatic difference in the way it's played based upon what server you're playing on, what rule set you're playing on, and that's why I'm making this video. Because it might stink to play on one server where you might have the time of your life playing on a different server. And it's a bit daunting when you're first starting out looking about getting into this game, what should I pick? So let's get into it. So I'm going to reference live a lot. So the definition, just rough definition of it, it's a server being run by Daybreak Games, originally Sony Online Entertainment, SOE. It means it's a officially supported server, it's a legitimate one that's being currently used. And typically when people refer to live, they're more meaning a current expansion server, not so much of a time lock progression, even though they're both being officially run by Daybreak. Hopefully that makes sense. I mean, it could be a bit confusing that description. So, there's three main options that you have when playing EverQuest, three major ones that people typically go to, being current expansion, live servers, time lock progression, or somewhat special rule set live servers, emulator servers, and there's a bunch of different emulator servers, but I'm just going to talk about Project 1999, because that's the most popular one. So let's get into it. So let me just show the servers just in general. So this is on uh, uh, Daybreak Games. So this is a, the officially supported servers. So you have these white ones are typically all live servers. So for example, one of the most popular live servers is Fronia Vi, which has a current expansion out. You have stuff like Bertoxilis, which is what I played on way back in the day. Again, current expansion being, I think they're gonna make the 26 soon. It's a new Velius expansion. Correct. These are all live servers, and they're typically free to play on. And then you have these preferred servers, or time lock progression servers, which require a subscription to play on, such as Mangler, Celo, Miracle, uh, Agnar was an old one. You have some of these old ones that had voting time lock progression. So normally with these other servers, these other time lock progression, the new expansions are released in a certain time interval, like one to three months. There was some of these old ones that were had expansions unlocked by certain content being completed or by uh, community voting whether they wanted to move on. And let's talk about the emulator servers. I'll just show the browser. This is the emulator server browser. So there's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of them. And typically they require... Uh, a special download of backwards files. I know some popular ones are like Shards of Delaya, um, EQ Reborn. There was this one guy trying to make another Project 19, well, like an original EQ Classic server. But the most popular ones really are the Project 1999 run servers. And what these are... Moment. What they are, they're not officially supported by Daybreak Games, but uh, Project 99 has been given an okay to operate. They won't necessarily be shut down like some of these other ones could be. But Project 1999, its intention was to create the most accurate version of what it was like to play this game, what it was like to play EverQuest in the original period from 1999 to around 2001, 2000 period with uh, Classic, Unarch, and Velius, and with all the patches also chronologically encased within that. So that's what this is. So the blue server is sort of the end server of Project 99, where they did a lot of the testing. It was to get... It took a long time to reverse engineer all the patches and all the content that was released from the original game. It took them like 10 years. So... The blue server was a testing ground to eventually create what we have green and teal. B 
being servers that will chronologically release all their content analogous to what actually happened back in the day. So you'll have Kunark in a, a year or something, or nine months, and Velius from nine months from that, and the patches that were within those eras being released chronologically. And if you see green and teal, that looks confusing. What happened is green had such a high population when it first dropped earlier in October 2019 that they had to make an overflow server called teal. So that's what they are. They're, they'll, they'll eventually merge back together. That's what it said. But um, it's just an overflow because without instancing, it gets kind of ridiculous. And then red is just the opposite version of blue, but player versus player. PVE is player versus environment. So let's talk about the pros and cons of all three. So if you choose a current expansion live server, like Fronia Vi or Bertoxelis, whatever it might be, the benefits of this is that all the content is available to do, so long as you have the expansion. But all the content is available to do, and there's really not that many restrictions in terms of your playing. Some of the best gear that you could possibly get is there. You could probably get, <laughs> it's probably the fastest level up as well out of all of them if you have help. The big issue I see with it is that these servers have been running for so long that they're really top heavy and that some of them have really low populations. So you will probably not be able to group all the way up to nearly max level. You're going to struggle to get up to there. And this game was designed for grouping. This game was not designed for soloing. It, it really sucks to play it that way. That's why I really don't recommend current expansion live servers unless you know what you're doing. Time lock progression on live servers. These are personally my own favorite. They take all the quality of life features and patches that were implemented on the current expansion live servers, but lets you experience content from way back when. And the fortunate thing is these servers are very popular. When they first drop, they have huge populations, so finding groups is relatively easy. In my experience, as long as you get in there's a huge population until about the middle of Kunark, and that's really solid. So the, the first major expansion that's released, as long as you get in about halfway, at least as it was on Mangler, you'll definitely be able to find groups all the way up to 60 very easily. There'll be plenty of people, and then after that, it gets a little bit, there's a bit more of austerity. You'll still be able to find groups, but it won't be as many. I think probably the cutoff is Lukelin, the third expansion where you go to the moon. That's when it starts to get kind of difficult to level up define groups. So time lock progression, if you like the, a lot of the convenience features, if you like instancing so you don't have to compete with God knows how many people on emulator servers, um, if you don't necessarily care for the huge time sinks that uh, the more classic recreations of the game have, definitely time lock progression live is something you might want to consider, but uh, keep in mind that Time lock progression you typically have to pay for, where many of the current expansion servers are just free to play. And then let's talk about the emulator servers. These are also, for the most part, free to play, but uh, it's a bit more difficult to download it in the first place. In terms of grouping, I think Project 1999 honestly has the most healthy population out of all of them. If you want to level up, have a good time. Definitely Project 1999 is a great choice, especially green and teal, which just dropped, which just dropped. So it's going to be a huge population for a long time leveling up. It's going to be very solid if you want to actually experience this game as it was. And if you like more of the challenge, more of the difficulty, if you like things that are much more hard earned, if you like to see what this game was actually like back in the day, what got so many people drawed in, one of the most hardcore MMOs that you could possibly play, that's it for you, Project 1999. P99, hands down. That's the server that you want to go on. But uh, for my myself personally, I spent a lot of time there, but uh, I, I'm going to be playing on Mangler for the rest of my EQ career. I don't really want to go back for... Uh, just don't have the time necessarily anymore. So hopefully that helps out if you're getting started, you're interested in playing EverQuest. That's a general overview, so definitely... You want to pick one of these three. If you're not having a good time on one of them, there's not many people to play with, you might want to check out a different one, a different version of the game. And I will be making videos in the future about how to even get started, how to, the big programs you want to download, 
how to even download the game in the first place, maybe some UI changes for all three of these. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the...